Welcome back to Blender for Blogs. I'm Justin, and this is the video editing series where we're using Blender to edit videos for our blogs. Check me out at blenderfrenzy.com or just Blender Frenzy on YouTube. That's fine. Today we are going to be talking about uh, putting all of the stuff we've been doing together. So we've been talking about importing uh, audio, uh, text, and images into our uh, Blender file. So now we want to combine all of it together uh, to look something like this. Or maybe you're teaching your audience something really important and want the ability to really hone in and demonstrate all of your teaching points. So in this series, you're, you'll learn how to add words or pictures in order to do just that. And of course, you'll probably want to animate them by making them fly out or fly in or creating bulleted lists of all your important things or other transitions like wiping in or wiping out. So before I get started, I want to warn you that this is going to be more of a real-time workflow. So some parts may be a little bit tedious, um, but I thought it would be good to show you kind of how um, I just go about fixing things, solving problems. Sometimes I make a mistake um, and go back and I fix it. So um, yeah, this is kind of more of the real-time video editing. So yeah, having said that, let's get right into it. I've saved this as a couple more iterations here, and uh, I've placed, um, as you can see, I'm using the GIFs uh, scene that I used when I recorded my uh, last video, uh, because I have the placement, I just roughly placed this where I kind of wanted things, and um, it also used the bullet list, my favorite bullet list uh, effect, using the masks, like just like this. And um, so that's, these are both roughly placed where I want them, but now we have to add everything else, and then we'll fine-tune this as well. So basically, we're going to start where we have our OR and our chalkboard come in, and then we're going to end with our wipeout here. So let's go back just a little bit here and see what we have. Beautiful. And you can also see I actually added uh, another audio here. I actually basically just duplicated this because there weren't enough bird chirps uh, at, at the end here. So I just duplicated this up to here and uh, just got you a little bit more birdies there. Uh, if you were wondering, but that's what that is. You don't have to do that. Um, so we've got the or. Maybe you're teaching your audience. And then right here when I say maybe you're teaching your audience. I want to bring in the first text. And so now let me show you. Over here in Google, I have basically included all of the images I want together to uh, line them up here. And so just like before, what I'm doing is I'm using a background. I just uh, used the same background that I did here when I was uh, teaching that at first. Uh, a few videos ago, um, you just go to background and you can do image, choose an image, and that will make it uh, your background. And I like doing that because uh, when you have that as your background, um, you don't, you, uh, let's see, this, this is actually just um, the text here. But uh, but the background itself, you can't click and move it, and, and it just makes things a lot cleaner that way. But anyway, so I've got these here. I've got uh, three pictures. I've got the pictures with our text on it that we created in Blender, actually, because you can see that it's uh, curving there, and you I did that effect in Blender. And then I just downloaded both of these from Pixabay. And so you have these CC0 license pictures uh, that you can use. But uh, if you wanted to look those up, you can do that. I'll probably put them on my website, too, so you can just download them from there. But the reason, again, I do it like this is so that I can line everything up. So I create one slide where I'm lining everything up exactly how I want it. And then I duplicate that slide out and then delete the stuff that I don't want so that I can get one slide with one image on each of them. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, download as PNG files um, with a transparent background. And then you'll just have this uh, imported into Blender just like this. Uh, you don't have to do any adjusting or any transforming or any scaling or cropping. It's exactly like you want it. And then here um, I added my list of awesome here that we created uh, during the bullet list effect. And then I just, to create this uh, little box here with the wipe in, uh, all I did was come up here and add a shape and just did a simple square. And then I changed this the fill color to like a dark blue. 
and then I changed the text color to a, an orange and you know you can change it to whatever color you want uh, I think I made this like 110 for the size uh, I made sure that it was centered both horizontally and vertically and then um, I did all caps and I just did wipe in I think I did two spaces and then one space here just like that um, and of course I changed the font to be uh, it's called font diner swanky so that's what I used and then um, in order to get it uh, like this you can select it and then there's this little circle at the top that if you click and drag you can actually you know make it at any angle you want and then if you um, have the selected click format options up here you have uh, more options that you can do for formatting so if you go to the size and position drop down you can see a whole bunch of things so here you can you know do the rotate um, to a specific angle if you wanted that you can also rotate it 90 degrees there uh, flip it uh, was that vertically yep and then horizontally or vice versa however you say that anyway so that's what I did there I'm just gonna kind of delete that and then I did the same thing with the uh, wipeout and then I put this uh, this is the last frame of that GIF file in here. And then I also put a little text box up here with viathreadbombing.com because that's where I got it from. I don't know if I had to do that, but just in case, you know, um, kind of give credit where credit is due. Uh, I think for the promo video I did uh, via Tenor because that's where I orig originally found it. But this time I'm, I, I downloaded it from Threadbombing. But anyway, I just put the last frame in here so that I could... Um, adjust the positioning of this wipeout here um, and I want it about right there and so again don't forget so after you get everything lined up like you want uh, just uh, come over here and do shift select for all of these selected go up to background go to color transparent and then done and then you'll just select each one of them download as PNG or if you wanted to select multiple at the same time you can, if you did your add-ons, if you did your slides toolbox add-ons, then you can open that up and go to your export tools and then hit PNG. And then that's going to save these as a PNG with the transparent background. Uh, it'll save it as, zip, as a zip file, so you have to actually go in and extract those. But um, it's a lot easier if you have a whole bunch of different different images to work with. Okay, so that's how I got all of my images. So now let's go back to Blender. So I want to basically bring them in. So I brought the text in first, like right when I was saying teaching something. You're teaching your like right here. So I'm going to do Shift A, add an image. Um, so I'm going to select that one. Uh, overdrop, and there we go. And then I'm just going to uh, drag that out here just a little bit. And then I'm going to place the other images on top when I say something like adding images. Your audience something really important and want the ability to really hone in and demonstrate all of your teaching points. So in this series, you're, you'll learn how to add words. And I think when I say or pictures. So instead of doing Shift A, I'm actually going to do Shift D to duplicate this one. And I'm going to change data file since this is a duplicate of this one. Right, it's still using the text 01 AB, AB cat 02. I'm going to do change data files and then select. So I have one, and I've again the naming convention. I did this on purpose 01, 02, 03, 04, 05. So I know since I'm using one, uh, next one is going to be 02. So I'm just going to select that, uh, double click. And then this is going to be Shift S. Snap that right there because that's when that's going to come in. And we're going to pull these over just a little bit more. Or pictures in order and then I think it's just one right after the other. So maybe right here. Well, let's let's do a little bit more precise. So let's do I say 10 frames, I suppose. So page down and then uh, Shift D to duplicate. And I like the, uh, duplicating these. Um, because then I don't have to keep going over here and going blend overdrop, uh, which is pretty tedious. So um, here, if I uh, select this handle and then hit G and then 10 and then enter, and that will put that at 10 frames later. Words or pictures in order to do just that. Oh, of course, now it's the same picture. So it's just 
this one on top of this one. Um, so let's go to change data files. And we want three because that's the third one. And so now let's just refresh here real quick. To add words or pictures in order to do just there you that. go. And of course, you'll probably want to animate them by making them fly out. Okay, so now when they fly out, and basically I did this one first, one, two, three. Uh, and uh, I guess I can do it in that order. So that's this one. So let's see. You'll want to animate them by making them fly out. So right when I say fly out. Now I'm going to use the... Uh, wave file down here to kind of give me my cue on my timing here fly out, fly out. so start, i start saying fly out here i think i'm going to start that here now i have the dope sheet already open it's just hidden here so i'm going to expand this out a little bit and i don't need to see this that big there i, I can just put this as a little window up here bring myself some more room uh, hovering over here, I'm going to hit zero. That'll center that cursor there so I can see where I'm putting those keyframes. And let's see. Yeah. Okay. So keyframe on the positioning. So um, it's okay. I can hit image offset because I know that is exactly where the image is going to be and end up because we made it in Google Slides specifically that way. Uh, so I'm going to change the X position here. Um, so first of all, it's going to be at zero, just like this. I'm going to hit I for a keyframe. That adds my keyframe here. And then fly out or fly in. Okay, so it's got to, it's got to be before or fly, in. or fly in. So about right here, I'll have it all off the screen. So just start dragging until he's all off the screen. Right there. And his shadow as well, right there. 1291. We're just going to change that to 1290. Okay, that's good enough. Well, just in case, 1295. Okay. Hit I. Oh, don't need to hit, don't need to hit enter after that. And now we have our two keyframes. So here. Making them fly out or fly in. Okay, so we've got that one. Now we need to do the next one. So this is the second one that I went with. Um, let's see, just gonna, I'm gonna use this one as a guide here, just selecting that one. And then um, that's where this one starts. And maybe right here, I'll have this one start to leave. So select this one, come over here, same thing, image offset, hit I for starting and then now, if I want them all at the same end point, uh, then I just uh, can just make sure, let's see, 1435, I'll just copy that for now here. So Control C to copy and come back up here. Okay, and image offset, we're gonna move this all the way off screen, maybe right there, where, where, where was it, about seven. 700? Yeah, about 700. So I'm just type 700 there. And I for my keyframe. Fly out or fly in. All right, and next one. So this one, one, two, and then maybe right there, the third one, which is the one that's below it, all the other ones. Image offset, I. And then we're gonna end at the same place, so control V, control V to paste. And um, actually, huh, it doesn't go uh, left to right, it goes uh, up and down. So I'm gonna just right click, clear keyframes there for that one making sure that one's selected, of course. And let's do uh, that again, coming over here, right about there, I think. I'll do I on the Y, and then I'll do Control V, and then move that up, because that goes up, 
which is going to be 681. We'll do 685. 685. Make sure that's all the way up. And then I there. And just do a little refresh a -roo. And there we go. Fly out or fly in. Okay, perfect. Now I'm just going to select these here. Oh, select these. Yeah, Shift select and then Shift S. So we're going to end it right there because they're all off screen anyway right there. And then when it says or fly in, that's going to be the start of my list of awesome. So I'm just going to take this and this one and just drag those. Oops, drag those out over here. Um, maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, I'll be right there. And then make sure, oops, page down. Make sure that's right up on there. Now you can see that the mask doesn't need to move. Um, so I didn't need to animate that uh, because this text is going to be coming in from the left uh, to the right. So it's not going up and down. So all I need to do is animate this one. And hopefully, yeah, this image offset will be just fine because uh, that is our list. And that is what it's supposed to look like. So, okay, again, page down. Uh, on the X, I'm going to first, before I make the keyframe, because I want it to start off screen. So I want it to be right about here, which is going to be, what is that? 1665 minus 1665. Now I'll hit I. Or fly in. Okay. And then basically right after I say fly in, I want it to be there. So maybe right about here. Just type zero and then I, and then we have our keyframe here. So, or fly in, or creating bulleted lists of all your. There you go. Um, I actually want this to be really a little bit faster, so I think I'm gonna just um, make sure only this. First of all, make sure only this one is selected, and then make sure only this keyframe is selected. Shift S to current frame and then it snaps that there. So then it's going to be a little bit faster, I believe. Or fly in. Yeah. Or creating there you go. list of all your important things. Perfect. Okay. So now um I actually think that these are too fast as well. So instead of uh, 10 frames for each of them, I think I'm going to try either 15 or 20 frames. So let's I'm going to try 20 at first. So um so I'm just going to do slide this over here um, actually you know what I can do um, just to uh, be precise here if I hit G and then 10 then that makes this 20 <laughs> so then I'll do G snap that there so that should be 20 yep 20 frames length and I can do the same thing so I can select this this and this actually and then just hit G and 10 and now I'll select this, this, this. Oh, you know what? I should have probably done that for the for for the mask as well. Um, whoops. Uh, so this mask goes here. I'm just gonna snap that and then grab and snap that by using Control and then Control or G Control and then there. Um, okay. So now I'll just box select these and, and that and then shift select these handles. So all of this is selected here. And then G and 10. And I think that's it. So I, these all should be 20 in length. Yeah, except for the last one, of course. Alrighty. And let's see what that looks like. Or fly in, or creating bulleted lists of all your important things. Or other transitions like wiping in. Yeah, that might be too slow. Or creating bulleted list of all your important things. No, I like it. Or other transitions like wiping in. Yeah, perfect. So uh, wiping in will start right here. So I'm right there. In fact, you know what? I'm going to save this. So I'm going to save this and then Control Shift S to save and then plus. So I'm going to stop it here for time, um, actually, and we're going to go ahead and pick it up, uh, continuing on in the next video.